Welcome to the latest video as of today for the Alterig land-based oil platform. There's a couple things that people have observed in the week of it being out and I'd like to address some of the things and hopefully make it much better than before. So let's get going. Now first thing worth noting, there's been requests, there's been messages. I preferred the simple way where you do it, where you clamp it yourself, but enough people have reached out and said they'd prefer an automated system. So here you have it. It's not the best solution, but it does work automated now. So I added a block to this so the wall can slide out more. And now you have space to get the clamp in. Also the top swivel part has been brought down. So once you hit the top, that's where it can access the top half of these. So for a quick demonstration, before we dive into the other stuff, you turn on the clamp and you just move the wall. Boom. And that's all it is. So quite simple. Um, I Maybe you could put it back in. Let's try. All right. So you could even put them back. Now the way to do it at the top is likewise. You just bring this whole thing up to the top and once it stops on it stops, you could just attach it to there. I also sped this, um, sped up the clamp so it moves up faster so you don't have to wait as long for it to get there. But pretty much once we're stopped, we just align it, turn on our clamp and push it out. And there we go. So. And actually the nice thing is, even if you're at the top with this mechanism, you can still put it into there. Just, I'm going to stop it before it hits the, hits the uh, pump jack, but you just bring your pump jack higher. So this way actually you can put more um, rods in at once. So that's the, the update that was just released earlier today. But on to the bigger problem. Now this is been brought to my attention by many of you but I do have to thank especially um, user Superosh he gave me a whole creation that was his uh, what he would do to solve the overheating issue and the distillation issue that we're currently having so this is his creation as you can see he's a smart guy like he figured out to put the uh, oil powered um, heater up here and uh, enclose the uh, distillation process in a tube. So that, that um, idea, I didn't get to the testing and kind of troubleshooting, but great idea. And I'm definitely gonna try to take some of this into my uh, new creation or into my update. In addition to the uh, distillation temperature not heating up enough, one of the big issues that we're having is that the helicopter's engine gets too hot the little um, welder gets too hot. So there's a solution that I'm thinking to do for this. It may or may not be the greatest, but let's see what we can do. So what I'm thinking, and let's just start by deleting all of these. We're gonna get, put them in a different spot and we're gonna put this whole mechanism in a different spot. Now, before we move on, I am going to run a test that I'm going to take you guys on this journey. So let's run a test in the Air Force Base. Originally, the video was supposed to be here, but because uh, it took a little longer, I just made it a separate video. You could watch it on my YouTube. It's called uh, the testing of the furnaces. Now, based on the information that Superosh provided for his with his tests, we're going to go ahead and copy his style a little bit and it is to feed or create a separate sort of area that's very small that'll have the heaters pumping into. We just have to clear this out. Now Superosh also mentioned that he had an issue with um, these pumps. What I'm guessing happens is that the game kind of almost stores fluids inside this uh, system. So if you're pumping diesel and then switch it to something else, a little bit of diesel actually does end up here. So we're going to have to have most likely uh, call it multiple, like each tank to each pump, uh, each type of fluid. So whether it's crude diesel or jet into both of those. So we'll need actually six 
pipe paths rather than what we currently have. So this system doesn't work, but that's not our main focus. That's not, that's not what's causing all the fires. So we need to tackle the fire situation first. So now I wanted to make this as small as possible, and this is pretty small, and then we'll feed it with multiple um, heaters or furnaces, sorry. So that's what we could do in this area here. That means this reservoir will only ever be just pure crude and it won't actually be increasing in temperature to mix anything. That's going to happen in here. So that said, we're not going to focus on bringing anything into those uh, containers or those vessels for now. Let's just focus on the distillation process to get it perfected. Now, another consideration that we have right away, call it a design consideration, is I want to have the heaters as far away from the helipad and the building as possible. So with that in mind, um, let's see what we could think of here. Sometimes it's hard to think while I uh, have the microphone on and I'm talking, but also to save everyone's time. So the system that I thought of is slightly different. So instead of putting the uh, furnace up here and then having it too close to the helicopter i'm trying not to adjust any of the main building leave it as is so instead i flipped this entire uh set of tanks so if you see this is now tank one with the crude and this is where we're going to have the heaters or furnaces so as far away from the building as possible and now there's actually six um reservoirs here like if you count them one two three four five six uh all but obviously they're not six inside this first one here is just one big chamber with a very thin distillation chamber and then here we have we've now expanded we've doubled the uh diesel and jet fuel ones so now they're double size and hopefully this can work for the heaters for the furnace system now this i didn't touch i just added this one staircase here there's a uh, fluid meter so you can climb up this uh, second staircase now and access the fluid meter inside the jet reservoir but i'd left all this i didn't touch any of this stuff yet and i reduced the size of the slurry and water by just this height here the frame is still the same and I'm thinking that in this area, I might actually put the uh, diesel furnace and have it flowing into the distillation chamber, which is now nice and close. This hopefully eliminates the overheating that the main building was getting. Now, the first thing we need is, so we're gonna have to have the main, the fluid coming out of this here like out of the swivel it goes up here and right now it comes across through this uh, electric heater and into the system now this system is all shot meaning it's not even doing anything anymore because it's uh not in the right location and anyways we know we're gonna have to fix it so this is probably gonna change regardless Um, I see what we have, like it's going under the stairs. So that's the first thing that I want to keep in mind. And then second is that, um, well, I guess even this catwalk can now join this catwalk. We can have two ways up either. Like it'd be nicer actually to have the steps rather than this ladder here. The ladder is not as great. Try to reduce ladders. Like they're not as safe on site when you're using them. Also, I don't quite like this. Might just do that. If we're gonna be really picky and striving for realism, as I sometimes do, this is probably the most accurate. You'd have at least that kind of cage there. And also, I'm not a fan of having to step over this, but this is not a video of me fixing minor things. This is a video of the retrofitting 
of this uh, distillation process. So once I finish this, I don't know why I just started that. But anyway, off to the other portion of things, which consists now of this. So the stairs, whatever, I can fix that after. The only thing the stairs will do is they'll dictate where uh, the fluid comes in, but really that's easy to switch. So this furnace, uh, it's a little closer than I'd like. So let's even move it down to here. So the reason why we have this furnace is just that the intake uh, heat or intake t t to boost up the intake temperature, just even by a little bit. Um, it helps if you're trying to distill right away and it helps to get it to lower a higher temperature right off the bat. So we're just going to put a simple, this is probably going to enter in the wrong place. So I guess we'll have to expand this out a little bit, turn it and go right into there. Just make sure everything's fully connected. The pressure thing can stay there. I mean, it's not going to change pressure. It's fine. That's more so just to show that we're flowing. That was a good lucky guess. There we go. So in with this, we're now pumping the crude into the main chamber. That kind of looks like a catwalk, just looking at the heater. It looks a little like a catwalk, but probably not the smartest thing to step on and in that case we'll probably just uh, push the stairs up in this area here a little higher until it reaches the same height as that oh that's too high one lower actually right there and uh, continue these stairs up so we can attach it all but this is great because now we could actually view what's inside this chamber and we have the secret uh, fluid meter that I've added. So with the secret fluid meter, we can fully gain a good understanding of what is uh, going on in that space, meaning the jet fuel space. Uh, definitely we'll add some stairs and or some uh, railings in this area, but whatever. At least, and then that will, we may even leave this as a secondary access but that's not our primary so it doesn't really matter anyway back to this so we've now input the fluid through this or the the warmed up temperature now this heater i'm probably going to put on a separate circuit because right now i guess i probably even deleted the button or well, I deleted all the systems for it. So we're going to re revamp the heating system. I guess if we go down here, the, bu the, the button that turns on the distillation process is now not controlling anything. I'm probably only going to, for just efficiency's sake, only run this heater or furnace only if we're putting uh, fluid through the distillation process while trying, or sorry, pumping in fluid at the pump jack while trying to run the distillation process at the same time. If we're just wanting to pump in crude, there's no reason to be running that. I mean, yeah, it's gonna heat up your, uh, he heat up whatever's coming in, but it won't really matter. I mean, whether we, if we're just trying to export crude, who cares if it's warm or not. So that's the first step. And, um, yeah, I don't even want to try it because really we know it's going to work. So we're pumping in here. Good. We're going to have to put a pumping system to fill this little chamber now. But we only really want to fill it if we're wanting to run the distillation. So let's put some uh, of this stuff. And even still, for uh, the sake of the system... We may not want to overfill or, or fill it too fast, but I guess realistically, um, oh, where's that thing up here? Realistically, uh, that's something that just needs a bit of testing. Like if, if this pump, so this area fills with crude. Now say we want to actually um, pump in or 
distill things. You now turn this pump on. Great. It's going to fill this area. And then this area will start to distill. Now this volume may not be too much. Like I'm not quite sure what it is, but... Uh, and also worthwhile is to put a little... Uh, this kind of system that we could glitch through the wall and check on what is going on in here, but it's so thin right now. Hmm. Maybe down here where it's not as obvious. That's just a little kind of secret thing that lets us see what exactly is going on so we'll just leave it like that i don't like it it looks like a mistake i tried to avoid things like that hmm. anyway we'll come back to that in a second whatever it's not a big deal so that fluid meter is going to tell us what's in here what's going on and we kind of need it for debugging at least then we'll see if uh, what we do with it after one other system that Superosh uh, gave, or idea, is just on this side right here. We'll put a series of um, these guys. And I mean, we'll have it on both sides. So this is something I've added. Th so the main uh, pump out area is on this face right here, and it has its own pump. But if you come with a pump truck, then you can pump out much more. So I put these there if you want to pump out crude on the right hand side or the diesel on the left into the individual truck chambers. There's uh, you don't have to use the pump out button with the pump. You could probably just run it directly with uh, this system. And the reason we're putting it on this side now is uh, if we want to pump out of the main uh, the, the storage tanks so for whatever reason you fill the storage tank up with diesel and you decide okay i gotta actually pump it out then you use this one in combination with this one here for the diesel this is crude and i'm gonna put labels just so it's all uh, clear because right now that one singular thing there and these guys here doesn't really explain much and then in this one since this is our only place to access the uh, jet fuel, I'm just going to go ahead and add uh, two more. Now you'll tr your truck is going to have to have a uh, winch, or uh, w yeah, the cable will have to be on a winch system, otherwise this won't really work. It's probably too far to climb down these stairs and back here where the truck is parked down here. Whereas these ones will be very easy to reach for a truck. I just can't put a catwalk here. Technically, I put, could put a cat one the the releases here, but you'll need more catwalk systems. So you're just gonna have to walk it if you want to pump out the jet fuel. Otherwise, use this, and this is kind of the main pump out station. Okay, so we're pumping into this, and I'd like to now. One thing that was uh, give, given, one piece of information was given to me that the. Uh, this distillation chamber does not like to be more than um if it's more than 90 percent full inside this dis distillation chamber it'll actually start to freak out it won't distill properly so we're gonna have this distillation cut off and it's gonna consist really of a couple things the uh input for the number, which is going to be our meter. It's going to control the pump. And we're going to be receiving the uh, distillation process on. And this is the output. Since we already have four, we may as well put this with a input and we're going to call this the this is the fluid meter and this is the uh, capacity 
So that will actually, um, we will divide them. It'll be a division and we're gonna keep it less than 90% or yeah, less than 90%. So if the fluid meter divided by the capacity is less than 0.9 and if the distillation process button is on then we're going to activate our pump so this microcontroller should work should do the trick and we're going to connect it to the capacity now something that's weird actually because of all my copying and pasting i see that this one's actually working as something which is definitely not what i want yeah crude oil so we're gonna move this one back into here that's where this meter needs to be and even this one We'll have to put, this is the flutter. Okay. Then we'll put a new flutter in here. And I guess there's no need to replicate this. But what I could do is also this stuff could be, I mean, we could optimize this and put, make this even smaller. Oh, yeah, that's definitely a big no. Good thing we caught that. Close that off. Because my idea is to make this distillation chamber as small as possible to ensure that it mixes as fast as possible, or rather heats up as fast as possible. So the least amount of fluid in here is better for us, or less amount of fluid is better. This microcontroller can actually stay in here. It takes up some space, which is fine with me. And it's kind of very obvious where to find it. So that's okay. And then let's just drag this all the way down to there. All right, so we've reduced the size of this chamber, which is fine. We're gonna obviously have to put heaters. So that's gonna be another consideration. But for now, that, let's just roll with this. Ooh. I want the um, physics flutter. There we go. So physics flutter plus the fluid meter. And then this one stays out there. Perfect, okay. Fluid level and fluid meter. Capacity is capacity. The pump is this one. And the distillation cutoff or sorry, the distillation process on is gonna be the button that we still have in here. So this is, enables our distillation process as we had it before. So this way we're now pumping fluid and let's check what this thing is, crude oil, okay. So we're pumping crude oil into this chamber. Now this chamber now needs a bunch of heaters including the diesel one that I wanna put up here. And then we're gonna have to feed from this diesel chamber, as well as it's gonna have its own little diesel tank. So let's figure that out. In that video that I released earlier with the uh, testing of the different types of these heaters, it was very interesting to me that uh, it was saying that the diesel furnace allows more capacity so in that case we're going to put multiple pumps to try to pump this thing out as much as we can into the, co the heating chamber so now we have coolant in and up here we have exhaust and air the air in can just be a simple filter as we had it looks kind of funny let's at least make it an upright direction like that and then our exhaust. Now that is something that um, I saw many different ways to tackle. I want to have it up high to 
to get it clear of the main structure. So like, let's shove it up to here. And we'll put our exhaust there. And we'll see how that works. I mean, it's not going to be great and it may cause some lag and uh, whatever, but it is what it is. Let's just leave it there for now. Coolant in, coolant out. So this is where we're going to be cycling our different fluids. And then we need the diesel tank here. So I have no idea the capacity of the, um, how much it consumes. We can, like what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this. Just make sure it's aligned. I guess it would be. Yeah, it's three high, so. Yeah, it's aligned. I don't know, two of them, three of them? Can't tell you. And even still, we could make more up here. As such, probably flip them actually so it's closer, like this. And I'll have to find out, well, oh, what am I doing? I prefer when it's my own reservoir because then I can control it and only have one fluid meter. So that's actually much nicer. Okay, created the reservoir here. Now the reason I prefer my own reservoirs is uh, when you have a, when you have things like this, you just need one fluid meter. You don't need a bunch of them and just, I mean, I think it looks nicer. Really my only advantage um, of trying to create or trying to use the pre-made ones is if it's in a car and you just are limited by space. Okay, there we have three of these things now and we have this, so it'll be feeding into, where is it? There it is. It'll be feeding into here from our diesel and we're gonna have to put, uh, somewhere to fill it up. So there's gonna have to be some kind of piping system to this reservoir, but we'll get to that in a second. And then lastly, we know we have to put these pipes. So the coolant in and coolant out. Maybe it would have been better to actually orientate, orientate this thing a little bit, but it's fine. So let's install the piping. Okay. We've got, oh, not here, but we've got uh, the piping for that diesel going all the way there. And what, the one thing I actually overlooked, and the one thing that I, that uh, the comments were telling me, was that you want to have the pump, or put you, that the diesel allows you to pump more. So let's actually make sure it circulates like crazy. That'll probably be more efficient. So this is fluid out, then I'll have to rotate this one so it's the fluid in. Fluid out, fluid in, just make sure that that aligns with these ones. It didn't align so we're just going to rotate these. Right, that means this one now is in and it's going to this far right one, which is also in and then out and this is out, perfect. And then we'll make sure that that gains us access back into the chamber and then into the distillation chamber as well. this, put it through the wall, and then we'll rotate that and we put this one out and rotate just like that. And that'll be the big diesel. Oop. Ah, I see we have this thing. We're gonna have to go at one more, not a big deal. Cool. We'll 
fill this one up. Okay. That should be everything we need for the diesel generate or diesel furnace. Obviously, other than to start it and to put the system that plugs that fills it with the diesel. So in this case, this is all still our crude oil, whereas this is our diesel chamber. So I want to put it in the exact same height, or actually one higher. So right there. We'll feed it out from our diesel. Make sure it's the same color. I'm just keeping all the piping consistent here. Now we're going to need to make a microcontroller for the diesel. And I'm going to have to think of some type of pumping system as well. Is that clearing it? Yes, it is. And then it's a straight shot into here. There we go. All right, fantastic. I will put a pump here. And I don't know how fast this empties, but maybe we could get away with a small pump in this case. Forget if that's intake or out. Out, perfect. So in this case, we've put our small pump Maybe it won't work, but it'll be pumping up this reservoir with diesel from here. But what I, what I do want to do, oh yeah, also put a filter so we make sure we're actually only getting the diesel. Don't really care for anything else to go into that chamber, whether it's jet fuel or anything else. So we'll turn everything off except for the diesel. And that'll go to there. What I could do or what I should do is um, put a threshold gate and we'll shove it in here with this stuff. I might move it after, might not. We'll see how I'm feeling and if this system works well. So this diesel pump, I only want it to pump if this thing, diesel level, what is this? Oh, that's the diesel level of the, never mind, of this. So fluid level. Now I don't know the actual um, capacity. I guess I'll have to get a little dial. Alternatively, we could maybe see it from the catwalk. Huh. Well, what I might even do is have this catwalk end right here as we have and then this is where you'll see your diesel tank information and the, f the fill up thing is a little different because right now i'm thinking like it, it, just the logic of this system so if we have the uh just do that. the logic of the system says that if this reservoir is getting low start pumping from the main one uh that's all great well th so that should in theory keep this one topped up and that shouldn't be a problem for anything um what the problem i guess is now well is that we have to find out what 90 percent or whatever so once this thing drops to a certain level i want it to start pumping actually we probably don't even need we just ballpark it so the threshold gate will turn on when the when the low is like zero or negative whatever it doesn't matter and the high is let's say when we're at a hundred liters i want it to start pumping maybe it could keep up maybe not but regardless that should automatically keep this thing topped up now assuming we drain our diesel altogether faster than this can recharge then we're going to be in trouble but then as long as we put diesel back into the diesel tank this should automatically pump it pump in so we may not have to do anything like this may, may be all we need just for fun let's put uh where's this fluid meter for fun i do want to put the um 
a hose input up here. And if you really want to fill it in or really got to fill something up, you could use the hose anchor that's located here. You'll just need a truck that has a winch that you could feed up to here and you could manually pump up. It's not in a great location. So that's why I'm saying it's not like, you probably don't want to do that all the time. You'll need a truck down here somewhere and then you'll have to run up the hose all the way here and start pumping, but it's not impossible. So at least this way you have the option. Oh yeah, and I will put a dial right here with the capacity, with uh, the fluid level. And I guess we have two of them. We probably could have just got, no, we probably could have just got away with one of them. But what I do is the one that's kind of my one for just troubleshooting. I no, don't connect anything to it in case I delete it after, whereas the main one is inside the tank. So that's now operational or should be operational. We have this. So now we need multiple heaters to also charge up this thing in addition to the diesel. But let's, uh, let's uh, see what we need, what we can do. So the furnace, this one will just be electric, but I just love that the system now, like now knowing that it's, the, it's back here, makes it a lot easier for me because now I know it's not going to overheat my helicopter and stuff okay we have just enough space to do this and this now this one is well let's see which one's out this is coolant in so we're going to force it through the in so let's do that and then we'll put a big pump Presumably, the faster you pump through things through, the faster you'll heat it up. So then we need to put it so it's in. So now it's sucking things in. Oh, and the filter. All right. So what we now know, just because this is the worst mistake I hate to make, like when you don't put things in the right direction. So coolant in, and then it goes, this one is fluid in and then this one on top is also whatever fluid be that for the filter doesn't matter it can go both directions of that now we only want to pump in the crude oil through this and we're so now we're forcing it through here and on this side we're just going to be pushing it out as such I do want to compact this system a little bit like that so I can actually stack them closer together. Okay, so that's kind of the system. Oh, never mind. I was wrong. That is not the system. That's a terrible mistake. <laughs> we have to rotate this and it has to go into the little distillation chamber that we've created. That's what we were missing. All right, and then this one can go directly into there. And then this thing here, I see. I mean, to make the best design, it is worth it. And then we're just gonna copy and paste them as we go up. So it'll be easier once we establish a decent design as such and then this one goes down here it, it's also in the wall so we're gonna push it up yeah i could um make it go like into that kind of dead space that i created and then also come out but i don't want to put anything in there i just want it to be super straightforward to copy this design into here good and now these microcontrollers aren't bothering us Funny enough, they will actually bother us for when we go to um, copy this design because they're going to get copied with us or with it. So I don't want to do that. Okay, good. Now we have it coming into here or in through here into this pump through the heater and back into the distillation chamber is what we're going to call it. Kind of a Still, still a little bit clunky of a system, but at least now um, 
It is. Oh, we're still copying. That's fine. We've got to copy all this. All right. Let's move that micro up a little bit more. Okay. Now, let's start with the big heater and move out and move through the wall and all this good stuff. We, we need to go up. Yeah, just make sure we're copying it all. Perfect. Okay, that's the whole assembly. Kind of efficient. I mean, not the greatest thing. And then we have this pump below it, so we can't go up, or it can't go down, so we gotta go up. So let's go up to here. Hopefully it doesn't replace these microcontrollers. Realistically, it shouldn't. And this is as close as this can get. All right. Did it replace the micros? Nope. All right, and then let's just keep going up. We gotta clear that, which is the intake for the uh, diesel. And we're also clashing with the intake of the main, uh, the main intake. So something's gonna have to happen here. But not a big deal. We'll just uh, push this out even more. All we need to do is push it up by one, so it's not too big a deal. And push, put it in, and through this slot. Up here is a bit more of a not a problem, but just gotta sort this thing. See, nice enough that the pump is actually down there, so it's not, uh, it's still watertight, and then we just put this thing there. So that actually did work out. It worked out fairly good. Cool. Okay. That's in this area, but for the rest, and we're still pumping in here, which is good, through the uh, diesel one. And then we have the main intake there let's add a couple more I mean part of me wants efficiency and then part of me just wants results and no fires let like my main concern or call it uh, criteria is to make it not catch on fire and to obviously to actually work we copied some of these, but that's fine. All right. So how many do we have now? If we count, we got one, two, three. So there's four of these here, plus the massive diesel one. Maybe it's enough. Um, what I do need to do for the test is fill this chamber up completely. The Call it the crude oil chamber completely. And then we're gonna test to see if what, when this is filled completely, if we could still distill, if we could still distill the oil. Otherwise, if it only works on the intake process, when we're actually putting it through this heater and making sure the volume's low, that's not a great result. That, I don't, like, I'm not happy with that result, and we're going to change the system. But let's see if this works. I'm just going to go ahead and connect everything, and then we'll do a test run. Here I'm just arranging the control panel to now have. So crude oil temperature doesn't really matter to me right now. Like that's just the temperature inside the actual crude oil chamber. I just want to make sure that it's not going to uh, start distilling within that chamber. Maybe it will, but this is the one that I care about. And that's the one inside this little... Oh, we have some things already connected. So that actually may have... That, the crude oil temperature may be the one. And then this threshold gate. Yeah, crude oil temperature, shoot. So that's actually what I wanted to put as the distillation chamber. Distillation chamber temperature. And then this one, the crude oil temperature, will just be the temperature of the crude itself in here. And now we got to find out what on earth this uh, threshold gate is. Oh just the threshold gate to tell us whether we're at the distillation temperature or not. 
Okay, not a big deal. So that's the oil or crude. Oh, uh, one sec. No, that's the good one. So that's inside the chamber. Perfect. Now, the last thing that I want to do is just to do a quick sanity check for everything. So enable distillation process, distillation chamber temperature, and then mainline pressure. Really, we don't need this. I may delete it after the crude oil temperature because who cares what the reservoir for the crude oil is. We're better off knowing, which I might actually put that down here, the capacity of that tank. So the crude oil reservoir one, crude oil temperature. This is, yeah, there's definitely a little bit of moving around things I need to do here. Distillation chamber fluid level. Because that is actually what I'm going to need to know, like what it fills up at. So fluid level, fluid capacity. Now we start to pump in. How does this work? The one thing that I need that I need to consider is that this thing starts to pump th pump in when I turn on my distillation process. Uh, like so, this distillation button enables the pump that fills the chamber for the distillation. What I'm gonna do, like I said, is pump fill in the entire uh, reservoir one with crude, with regular crude, and then start the distillation process to see if it works. We, in addition to this, I do want to put on a separate circuit. I do want to put on a separate circuit the actual, or the, um, so this is the distillation process. This is enable um, intake furnace. So we're going to forget efficiency for this time being. There's six of the electric furnaces in here now, heating up this little chamber, as well as the, um, and I'm going to drop the height of this too. So there's six of them heating up this chamber, plus there are uh, the, the diesel one, like we said. Let's remove as much of the area as we can. So that way we keep this potentially heated up like the fastest because there's less fluid in here. So, I don't know, maybe it works. Maybe not, but let's uh, give it a valiant shot. Anyway, let's restart this. This time I do actually want to pump up the entire thing and see if it can work from, call it, uh, cold or ambient temperature and in inside this main oh no we have to restart i lost my drill so we're going to forget efficiency for this time being there's six of the electric furnaces in here now heating up this little chamber as well as the um and i'm going to drop the height of this too so there's six of them heating up this chamber, plus there are uh, the, the diesel one, like we said. Let's remove as much of the area as we can. So that way we keep this potentially heated up like the fastest because there's less fluid in here. I don't know, maybe it works. Maybe not, but let's... Uh, give it a valiant shot anyway let's restart this this time i do actually want to pump up the entire thing and see if it can work from call it uh cold or ambient temperature and in inside this main oh no we have to restart i lost my drill the one thing I am debating is to have this chamber full on um, right away. Like have this distillation chamber 
actually be ready to go with this one filling up. So in that case, it won't, this pump won't turn on when we turn on our distillation process. What is this? But it'll, rather it'll turn on when we, right away. But we're like, it'll turn on, but to keep a capacity of less than whatever. So maybe that's something just to keep it kind of fueled up and ready to go. The downside of that is if you decide not to distill, what happens? That just stays, stays there. You can't pump it out. I guess you could, but then I'd have to add a system to pump it out. Let's try it as it is. Let's try it as we have it and maybe it'll work. Like, I guess there's no need to fill up the distillation chamber unless you plan on unless you plan on pump it or distilling things. Now, here's my microcontrollers with all the different um, heaters that I have throughout the place. But we're just gonna leave everything be and I'm gonna let this reservoir, reservoir one, it's a little confusing now because this is now three. I'm not gonna rename them. Reservoir one is still gonna be the one with the crude. It's just back here now. And we have so 29,000. So I'm going to let this fill up to 29,000 and then we're going to get back to see if we can distill. The moment of truth. So we're fully full. We're fully full. And fully full. That's a funny word or funny way to say it. The tank is full. Let's just say that. And now we're going to turn on the distillation. So we're fully um, at ambient temperature. There's nothing in the distilled ones now let's get going so we could watch all these start to rise all the electric ones should go at the exact same rate this one's actually going faster which is interesting the diesel That walk system is not complete, so I'm fix that up after. This is going, that's good. So this is all oil, and it will only be oil in there. But this one down here. Still all oil. I wonder why it's changing. Gotta see what's going on here. So it's still reading nothing. Okay, we've reached our temperature. Oh, dope, it worked. Okay, so we've actually reached our 300. Distillation chamber fluid level. Not quite sure how that's changing. Oh, never mind, we, I am, because we, were, we had everything in our crude oil reservoir and now we're pumping it up the distillation chamber. I see, so that's actually problematic as we pump into our distillation chamber the temperature is dropping and not any fault of any of this just because we have too much okay we're just gonna let it pump all the way I believe there's 6,000 so once we fully pumped up the 6,000 I believe this will start to rise again it's because we're pumping in and ambient temperature uh, crude oil. Not quite sure why we're getting a bit of lag, but anyways. We'll wait for this to hit 6,000. So we've reached the 90% and this is now heated up again. And we're gonna start to develop the jet fuel and then diesel. But that's interesting and good to know. So I guess we're better off having that chamber pumped up, ready to go. And then we turn on the heaters instead of what we just did. There's a bit of overlap or a bit of a gap where we didn't have um, the right temperature, where the temperature dropped until it caught up. But as we can see, all these are still doing very well. And I mean, yeah, there's six of them. It's kind of overkill, but whatever. I mean. We have infinite electric, or we don't have infinite electric, we have the base, which is connected to the power grid, as I like to think. 
Now this is still going very slowly. I'd, I'd like to see these distill a little faster. Okay, there we go. And then this should follow. This is probably... I would think it's pulling it into the uh, diesel. But there we go. And the nice thing is, if we go check on our helicopter... To find the temperature... I guess, first of all, it's not the right temperature. That's reading the, uh... It's reading the radiator temperature. But it's not on fire, so that's good. And that means the ambient temperature up there is 70-something. And then down here, if we check on this, 33, so that's inside here. And over this way. So the crude oil is not at the same temperature, so there's no need for it to try to reach the 300. Now this is going, these are distilling, and, and the nice thing is as these are distilling, it should be automatically pumping in more fluid into the chamber. But it seems that it's able to keep up with it at this point. It's like dropping and raising, dropping and rising. And of course, if you had this on, your temperature of the crude oil that you bring in is higher anyways. Anyways, I'm going to go clean up this system. This seems to be working. I will fix this before, so let's actually do that together. But I'm so happy with this. And let's see how that actually looks from a distance. Like that big cloud. I mean, it is what it is. It's an industrial project. You have... You produce some exhaust. It is not un unheard of. But cool. 